it has already proved to be one of the best events on the calendar. Welcome to day four of the BP Ultimate Rally Raid and round three of the World Rally Raid Championship. Another long day ahead for all the competitors who have made it this far. A tough day lies ahead as the crews head west back into Portugal today, over 250 kilometers of competitive race action. A spectacular way to start another day for the riders across the various bike categories, waking up to a fresh morning in Spain, but lying in wait, probably the most attritious surface they will face this week. The talk of the town was tyres and looking after them, particularly the rear. Overcook it and the final 50 kilometres would be unrideable and time would be left in the stage. It was all about tyre management. Our leader in the category, Tosha Shurina, who has been on spectacular form all throughout this year's BP Ultimate Rally Raid, opened the stage again today and held the early lead. But tricky navigation in the second half saw him drop back to eventually finish fifth, just over two minutes off the pace. America's Skyler House has had, all in all, a good event. He has kept everything neat and tidy, not pushing the bike too hard and managing the pace. Critically, so far, he's also not collected any penalties. There's no question he prefers being on the softer stuff, so fourth fastest today and fifth overall is a good result. Say the last 100 kilometers, I just decided to give it, give it my best and and have a good time. So it was fun. We did a lot of like, uh, you know, trails through the trees, some more water crossings, big water crossings, and a lot of people out here cheering us on, which is super, super cool. So. Um, yeah, today was a challenging stage, but we made it through clean, no slide offs into canals today, so it was a, a I'll count that as a, a major bonus. For many, the star of the show has been this man, Bruno Santos, riding on home soil, third fastest in the stage today, third overall in the bike category and leading the Rally 2 class. With just one day remaining, Santos looks set for a big party on Sunday night, if he can maintain this pace. Yes, at uh, 100 kilometers, we are out of tire, rear tire. I think nobody was uh, expecting that, but the, the terrain is very aggressive and uh, we have to manage the, the, the second part of the stage. Meanwhile, second in Rally 2 and leading the W2RC in the class is Bradley Cox. And looking at Rally 3 now, Gonzalo Amaral continues to lead the class from his brother Salvador and they are in a league of their own over an hour clear of the rest of the Rally 3 field. Back at the business end, Adrian Van Beveren did well to get the Honda to the end of the stage in second overall with zero grip levels by the end of the stage. The last part, everybody was with the slick tire and we managed our best, but sometimes it was, uh, it was scary, you know, when you have to brake and you don't have uh, grip on the rear, you, you slide really fast. But uh, yeah, I enjoy, I like this kind of terrain, I enjoy this rally. But the biggest news of the day came from Antonio Mayo on the Yamaha. He was quickest through, marking a stage win for the Portuguese rider and the first time we have seen Yamaha as a manufacturer take a stage victory in an FIM World Championship event since the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge back in November 2021. I loved riding here. I've never been here before and it was fantastic. Fast, slippery, just how I like it. I had a lot of fun. I didn't make any mistakes, always safe and my bike was impeccable. It was incredible how I was able to enjoy this bike on these tracks. I'm very happy with my performance.
Confirmation then of Mayo's victory. What a day for Portugal and for Yamaha. Back at the top of the stage standings for the first time in three years. Van Beveren second, just 29 further back with Santos closing out the top three. But it remains Tosha Scherreida in the hot seat for victory with one more day to go here in Portugal. In the quads, the category has been flipped on its head. Manuel Andiar, who has been dominating so far, has had a shocker. A mechanical failure and a crash saw him limp to the end of the stage over 40 minutes off the pace. Today I was riding very good and after the kilometer 200, I have a problem in my real axle, so I have to fix it and I lose around 20 minutes, so I try to push hard and I, I fall. Instead, Camille Wisniewski took charge of the stage today. He was flying on the Yamaha and it looked like he was set to take the win. That was until he was hit with over three minutes of time penalties. As a result, he dropped to second place and handed the win to this man, Mikolai Krysek, marking his first stage victory of the rally. There it is, Krysik put in a good ride today and was gifted the win at the final hour from Wisniewski in second and Antanas Kanapkinas in third. All that means a big change in the overall standings. Wisniewski leads Kanapkinas overall by nearly two and a half minutes with Gaidan Martinez who also had a difficult day in third. It wasn't just the quads that threw up some surprises today. The ultimate class also mixed things up. After two stage wins in a row, NASA Alatia took a more measured approach today. A good start, but difficult navigation and not wanting to take major risks. The Qatari seventh fastest in nearly five minutes off the pace. It's good, you know, we are so happy, you know, okay, uh, maybe we open the road and we lose the time, but I'm happy to finish uh, the stage and uh, just uh, we'll see for tomorrow, last, last day. Carlos Sainz, meanwhile, our championship leader, remember, was getting stuck in. After technical issues yesterday on his way into Spain, he managed to turn that around on his way back out towards Portugal. In the top five throughout the entire stage, he eventually finished fourth fastest despite a 10 second penalty. Well, it was a good day. Yeah. We tried to push as hard as possible and we are enjoying a little bit more today. One man we haven't seen much of this week has been Dakar runner-up Guillaume Dumavius. But the Belgian bounced back today, third quickest in the Toyota Hilux, just 36 seconds off the pace. After over 250 kilometers of hard racing, that's how close it all is at this level of the sport. It was good. First day without problem for us, so I'm happy to be at the end without problem. And yeah, it, it feels good to do a full stage uh, on full speed. Another driver who would much rather be hacking his Toyota Hilux through the desert instead of the tricky Portuguese trails is America's Seth Quintero. But he has been driving maturely and slowly building the speed. Today, he reaped the rewards of that approach to go second fastest only 25 seconds off the stage winner. A 
and that was this man, Yazid Al Raji. The Saudi Arabian bounced back in style today after a barrel roll yesterday and limited time last night to repair the car in the Barrios bivouac. Incredibly, he went quicker than anyone else. Proof of the renowned reliability of that Toyota. Now we push uh, and we catch the car in the front of us and we follow him around 40k. He comes. I can't pass him until neutralization, and after neutralization, we tell him, we need to pass, we are behind you. And uh, we go, and after we catch the guys after front of him, and after we follow him until next neutralization, and we tell him, we are behind you, you can open, and we open, and we are here, we win the stage, I think is we do it well. A great drive then from Al Raji today. Under difficult circumstances, the Saudi Arabian really proved what he's all about. 25 seconds up on Quintero in second, with Demavius, Sainz and Joao Ferreira rounding out the top five. But it's still Alatir who leads the class and taking the win is his main goal. And with Ferreira just over two and a half minutes further back, it's still very much game on. Over to the Challenger class now, and after a difficult day yesterday for Sebastian Loeb with an overheating engine forcing him to limp through, today he was out to set the record straight. He may well have lost the lead of the rally and likely the win, but he wanted to prove that his pace is 100% still there. The Frenchman fastest through in the tourist machine despite over two minutes of penalties. But we, we still had an issue with the engine all the stage. Uh, I had engine cutting bop, 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 all the time. So, yeah, yeah. but uh, for the rest, I uh, had a good drive, no, no problem. Okay, tomorrow you're heading into the last stage. Yeah, uh, yesterday we lost any chance for, for, for any fight. So today uh, it was just a question to drive, tomorrow is the same. So trying to take some experience and have fun. Next came Joao Diaz, also recovering from a fraught stage three. He was at one point fighting with Loeb for the overall lead, but now finds himself down in eighth place, nearly half an hour adrift of the leaders. Nonetheless, second quickest today. Another good drive from Luis Portela Moraes, second fastest yesterday and third today. A small consolation for what could have been after a difficult start to the rally leaves him well down the overall leaderboard. Only eighth fastest today, but no problem for Rokas Bachuska. The Lithuanian continues to lead the class overall. A relatively cruisy drive today. Another man less interested in stage wins Instead, his focus is on winning this rally and taking maximum points for his championship. Today was uh, quite uh, difficult. The beginning was nice, uh, clean, dry, and then when we came to Portugal, again mud and uh, wet, but yeah, we are here uh, one more day and yeah, keep going. So, another stage win for Sebastian Loeb, who's been left ruining that mechanical issue yesterday. 54 seconds clear of Diaz in second, with Moraes rounding out the top three. But it's a different story in the fight for the overall win. Bachuska remains on course to take the victory, with the two locals, Armindo Arojo and Ricardo Porem, set to join him on the podium. And so we now turn our attention to the SSB class, as they too left behind the warmer climbs of Spain to head west back to the Portuguese coastline. Second in the overall standings and doing everything he can to try and drag himself back into the fight for the win is Ricardo Ramilo. Another W2RC stage victory for the Spanish driver despite a slow puncture and after a great fight today he came out 48 seconds on top of Ruben Rodriguez. Uh, 
today or other, other good day, I have a, a one problem with the tire. I punch one tire, but the, the rest, very good race, very good speed, so much wall in the, in the sides, but I like so much this, this style. But it's a Spanish style. Rodriguez in the Can-Am machine was back in the top three again for the first time since stage one, but he had to work for it, just 15 seconds ahead of third place man Joao Montero. And it's Montero who continues to lead the category. His advantage is healthy, but this is rally raid and we still have another day to go. If anything happens, next in line is Ramilo to pick up the pieces and Montero is desperate to seal the deal and take a win on home turf. Uh, we have a puncture and uh, we need to, to push a little bit on the, the final, but yeah, it's a good stage. We, we need the victory, so we need to manage the, the space. Okay, tomorrow you're heading back to Portugal, or how will, uh, will you push it right till the end? No, we'll see what is the, the vantage and uh, we'll manage uh, to the final to, to give the win for the Portugal. Ricardo Ramillo then, one of the great characters of our sport, taking the stage victory today from Rodriguez in second and Montero third, managing his pace. And this is the reason why. His lead going into the final day is just over 14 minutes. Can he get the job done for the home fans? We've already had plenty to celebrate, but as the final day beckons, who will take top overall honours here in Portugal? Join us for the conclusion of the 2024 BP Ultimate Rally Raid. Don't miss it.